What's up, my dear language learning master? Welcome to episode number 15 of the Language Input Podcast, in which I address the most common questions and misconceptions when it comes to the language learning process. You know? And as usual, before getting started with today's topic, I, I wanted to remind you to leave your comments down below if you're listening to this on YouTube or any platform in which you can leave your, your comments with you know your your specific I mean your opinion on today's specific topic or any idea you have any question you may have when it comes to the language learning process because I'll be happy to help you out and you'll be giving me ideas for future episodes. Alright. Yeah with that being said let's let's get into today's topic. And today's topic is what are the best resources in order to learn a language for beginners. Okay, and even, you know, even from scratch, even you st if you start starting from scratch. Alright, so, yeah, when it, c when it comes to this topic, um, of course, it's really different. I mean, it really depends on the language you're going to learn, whether it's somewhat similar to your native language or the languages you already speak or not. And... Uh, yeah, I've talked about it several times that if you're, I don't know, an English native speaker or a Spanish native speaker and and you want to learn Chinese, like Mandarin Chinese, or I mean any language that's just completely different to your own, you're, you're going to need classes from the beginning. I mean, you're going to need someone to help you learn the language. You're going to need someone to adjust their speech so, so the message is comprehensible for you, right? So I do recommend taking classes if, if you're starting from scratch with a language such as, you know, Chinese for a native English speaker, for instance. You, you get the point, right? And I mean, but in today's day and age, depending on the language, you may be able to find like YouTube channels with, you know, teachers that are starting to post some videos um, to teach their native language with you know, stories or comprehensible input in general, okay, which is, again, the key to the entire process. So, yeah, you can even get started with YouTube videos, but, I mean, YouTube videos in which the teacher does a good job of adjusting their speech to provide comprehensible input in a, you know, ideally compelling way or in, in an interesting way as well, you know, because if it, if it is comprehensible and and interesting, you know, that's the that's the perfect combination, right? So yeah, I, I want to be clear on that because, for instance, when when I started learning Italian mm, a few years ago, because of the similarities between Italian and Spanish, I've talked about it a couple of times, but um, I, I started learning Italian from scratch, but because of the similarities, I was already be I was already able to understand. Uh, easy resources like cartoons from from the very beginning. So I've talked about it. I, I started watching Peppa Pig, like you know, a couple of five minute episodes every day at the beginning. So you know, if if you're getting back to to the previous example, if you if you're mm, thinking about learning Mandarin, not even cartoons are gonna be comprehensible for you. Okay, so that 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 was my whole point. Whereas with Italian, in my case, as a native Spanish speaker. I could understand cartoons, okay? So in that in that case, I didn't really need language classes, of course, you know. Um, language classes, the right language classes in which, you know, the teacher provides comprehensible input, ideally in, in a fun way, in a compelling way, it's, it's always a good resource, okay? And that's always going to help you. But my point is, in the if you can understand um, simple resources like cartoons from day one, just go with it. You know, no, no, no problem. <laughs> yeah. And um, so you know, once um, after talking about that, because it really depends on whether you're learning a totally different language or a similar one. Um, yeah, I want to talk about the resources that I think are most appropriate for for beginners or I mean you know according to the ones that I've used in in the languages that, I, that I've learned and that I uh, continue to learn and the new ones that I'm working on right now okay 
And well, the first one I already talked about it is just YouTube channels, YouTube videos of you know teachers who use comprehensible input to to teach the language, you know. And uh, I'm I'm actually working on Russian and Chinese right now, Mandarin. And there are a few channels here and there on YouTube, and you know they they all have their own style. That that's that's actually a good thing. But you know as long as they provide comprehensible input, we're good. And that's that's an excellent resource to to get started with the language. All right. I mean, provided that they do have videos for complete beginners, of course. Again, as usual, I, I'm gonna give you some ideas, but it all comes down to. You know, if you're understanding the message, you're learning the language. It's that simple. The process is working, okay? So, you know, check, um, I mean, give give the with, give the resources that I'm going to talk about a try. And if, if they work for you, you like them, and you understand what's going on, great, go ahead. If not, you can try something else, you know. I'm just, I'm just giving you ideas. But the, the most important point is, again, comprehensible input, all right? I want to be clear on that. So number one is YouTube videos, like YouTube channels, like I said. Number two, I, I also talked about it, is cartoons, all right? And as always, if you if you didn't get to that point yet, I mean, if you try to watch a cartoon and even uh, a cartoon is something you cannot understand yet, you know, it's not a big deal. Yes, you, you'll get that later. You know, I, I, I've i talked about this many times. Like, um, the fact that you cannot understand a specific resource, it doesn't mean that the process is not working, that you're not talented for languages, that you're not good at languages, or, you know, um, whatever you want to call it, all right? It, it just means you, you didn't get to that point yet, okay? So all you need is you need more comprehensible input at your level in order to get there, and you will, eventually, believe me, you know? So whatever the resource and whatever your level, if there's something you cannot understand, you know, it's not a big deal, you'll get there later. It, it just means you didn't get there yet, okay? It's that simple. So yeah, ca cartoons are, some, are an excellent resource because they're really simple, right, in general. So I believe they're a good resource for beginners to start accessing a sort of real life um, resources, okay? And I mean, I do understand that cartoons might not be the most interesting resource for us adults in general, okay? Although I'll tell you what, I've, I've watched cartoons in several different languages and you know, the fact that you can that you can understand what's going on in a, in a new language, that in itself is so rewarding that you, you don't even you don't even care about whether it's fun or not. I mean, just kidding. It's important for for whatever resource you're consuming or or using f to be comprehensive. I mean, to be compelling. That's that's key as well. But I, I've noticed that in myself that. You know, the specific cartoon might not be the most interesting thing in the world for me, but because I'm starting to be able to understand a new language, you know, I feel so great that I don't mind it. Okay. And second of all, I actually I also look at them as a sort of transition resource that's gonna give me access to more complex and interesting resources or materials. Okay. So, like I said, it's not a big deal. I, I don't mind watching cartoons for a while until I'm ready to to understand, you know, more complex resources, like I said, like uh, documentaries, for instance, okay? But, yeah, you know, as usual, give them a try. If you enjoy the idea, if you like them, if you can understand them, go ahead, all right? So, yeah, so number one, YouTube channels. Number two, cartoons. Let's go with number three. Um, comic books, yeah. Actually, that's that's usually the one written resource that I use. Um, I mean, the, the one, the, the first resource that I always use when when I'm learning a new language, okay, to sort of get used to reading in the language or to get to get started with with reading in in the new language. I always go with cartoons because, well, first of all. You know, the language is usually a bit uh, easier and simpler than not, 
let's call them normal bugs and then they have images so they you know images always helps it always help when it comes to understanding the message all right and then today you know we have so many different comic books that even if you're not in interested in a particular type of comic book you know you're gonna be able to find so many different topics and types and you know if if you're not interested in superheroes you know there are plenty of different topics you can you, you can find you know when it comes to comic books and i mean i personally loved reading the comic books when i when i was uh, a kid so you know i continue to do that in in other languages and i love it so you know give it a try as well because if you're a comic book lover you know you're gonna love this <laughs> of course you know yes yeah, so th those are probably the three most appropriate or three main resources when it comes to beginners all right I mean, in, in my eyes, or from from what I use in my daily journey of learning new languages, that's that's what I use the most. Okay, but also a few other ideas. You know, like like I talked in the previous episode number fourteen about language changes. You know, if you have a friend or a family member who already speaks your target language, you can do what I what I talked about with my mom. That you know, she was a French teacher, so. Uh, in college so what we did is um for an hour a day or something like that she would speak to me in french you know of course adjusting her speech so i could understand what she was saying and i would reply the whole time in in spanish in my in our native language all right so i wasn't forced to use the language to speak when i wasn't ready for it yeah i and i was i was i clearly wasn't ready for it yet and at the same time, you know, from my if my if my answers made sense, my mind could see that I understood what she was saying, right? So if you do have a friend or family member or just whoever um, that already speaks your target language, you know, you can also try that. But of course, they they need to adjust their speech. But you know, you know, adjust their speech. Uh, speak a little bit slow, uh, slowly. Um, use gestures, uh, pictures if necessary, etc. Right. And then I'm gonna briefly mention this one as well because I believe it falls more into the intermediate category. But I mean, in general, I'm not a big fan of you know specific levels for language learning. I mean. I, I usually break them down into, you know, beginner, intermediate and advanced. I, I, I don't like at all, you know, those C1 or B2 or whatever. Um, I was going to I was going to say BS, but no, no, <laughs> those things that, you know, mm, everyone talks about. Um, but, you know, I, I, I was going to talk about documentaries because I th I do believe they fall more into the intermediate category, okay? But if you're if you've been listening to cartoons or simple resources for a while, you can give them a try, especially those documentaries in which there's you know like a narrator, like those um, nature documentaries or or you know animal documentaries in which you know there's some action and then there's like a narrator explaining what's going on because they usually have like a sort of descriptive language they speak really slowly so they're they're easier to understand so you know give them a try as well and if you're if you're watching them on youtube you you, you always have the option of slowing down the pace which can certainly help i mean that works for any resource that you're um consuming on on youtube but in, in this particular case it, it might be really helpful okay so yeah, just like I said, like, like I'm always saying, comprehensive input is the key to the entire process. So give give them a try. If it works for you, great. And if it doesn't, just you know get back to a simple um, simpler resource, and you'll get there later on. No no worries. Okay. And yeah, the good thing about documentaries is well, first of all, they're usually more interesting, way more interesting than cartoons. And second of all, and it's related to the first one, is that 
there's so many different topics when it comes to documentaries right now. So, you know, if you're interested in nature, in animals, in traveling, in history, in painting, in philosophy, I mean, that, that would probably be a bit harder, you know, in a foreign language, but you get the point, right? Like there's so many different topics and types of documentaries. But in this level, yeah, I'll, I'd stick to those in which there's a narrator explaining what's going on as opposed to more like sort of interview, um, like, you know, like in town interviews and, you know, speaking to people on the street. Yeah, those are usually more complex because there's background noise and they speak faster and, you know. So in this level, I, I, I'd stick to to trying those first ones that I talked about. And yeah, if they work, great. If it, if they, you know, if you cannot understand them yet, go back to, to, a, to a more simple resource, okay? So, all right, so this, this has been episode number 15. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you, I gave you ideas to sort of continue to, you know, get exposed to your telegraph language while having fun at the same time which is my, one of my goals here with my project. And yeah, as usual, like I said at the beginning, let me know in the comment section down below whether you enjoyed this episode, what your specific opinion on it is, and any other ideas, questions, suggestions you may have for future episodes, all right? So thank you in advance for that, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you, my dear language learning master, and have a good day, wherever you might be. Bye-bye.